Everybody wants a hero Everybody needs a friend mm, Shoulder to lean on Everybody needs a helping hand Well, you ought to try Jesus Said he's just a prayer away See, he can make your burdens light Turn your midnight in the day, yeah. he's so much more than a healer. When you're feeling kind of down. welcome to tonight's Bible class. Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we approach your throne of grace, giving thanks to you. Thank you for your many one of blessings. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to come out and study another portion of your word, oh, Heavenly Father. Oh, Heavenly Father, we ask you to forgive us of our sins rather than by our words, thoughts, and deeds. Oh, Heavenly Father, we just thank you uh, for everything you have done and thank you for everything that you continue to do. For this is our prayer in your Son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. And tonight's Bible class teacher. Hello and good evening, family and friends, saints of God, lovers of the truth. Welcome to this Wednesday night Bible study here at the South Union Church of Christ. Family, we rise to give God glory and we rise to give God praise for our great God is in fact worthy to be praised. What a joy and a privilege it is for us to assemble here at this specified time, giving God all of the glory and every pound of the praise. We realize that nobody but the Lord woke us up this morning and God continues to preserve our lives even down to this present moment in time. Listen, as you are in the bustle and hustle of life, we pray that uh, your family is doing well and we want someone to leave here on tonight seeing Jesus. Amen. We want someone to have their burdens lifted. We want someone to have their faith renewed. We want someone to add extension to their hope string. Don't give up on God because he certainly has not given up on you. Uh, well, now, if you're visiting this channel, we want you to know that you are our honored guest. And each and every time you come and study the word of God with us, we are just delighted to have you come our way. Uh, it's always good to see my brothers and sisters, the superlative saints of the South Union Church of Christ online real time on a Wednesday night. And listen, we encourage us all to share this message with as many of our family and friends as we possibly can, because we know uh, that we all could use some encouragement from time to time. And so our uh, text of encouragement on tonight, we encourage you to uh, secure your Bibles, navigate over on your electronic devices, meet us or beat us. Proverbs 15. Proverbs 15. Let's open up our Bibles to Proverbs 15, and uh, we will examine another round of God's Word. Proverbs 15, beginning with verse 1, you should find these words. A soft answer turns away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. The tongue of the wise useth knowledge aright. But the fool, the mouth of fools, poureth out foolishness. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perversiveness therein is a breach in the spirit. That's in your Bible, just say amen. 
Amen. Family, we would like to continue to uh, dig into this theme on tonight, wise words to live by. Amen. Wise words to live by. A family, we went on record on last week uh, in examining wise words to live by, and we pray that it has been encouraging to your soul. Uh, we understand that uh, Proverbs is a wonderful book, an inspirational read. It is a book that we can apply to our daily walk of life. Amen. We can apply this to our daily walk of life. Uh, and I am encouraged uh, to know that God is interested in the quality of, of our lives. Amen. He does not just want us to live, but he expects for us to live and have life, you know it, more abundantly. Amen. Amen. More abundantly. So as we uh, uncover and even unfold this message on tonight, take a moment, plug into the live chat if you've not already done so. Uh, wise words to live by. Uh, just just drop that line into the live chat. Wise words to live by. It's time for our blessing. Wise words to live by. Now, we went on record on last week. Of course, the book of Proverbs is written as a father speaking to his son to leave him some encouraging words, some words that would preserve his life and even elongate his time upon this earth. And so when we consider what it means to be wise, we know that the Bible teaches that wisdom is the principal thing uh, and that wisdom comes from God. With all of thy getting, get an understanding. Listen, I am thankful for the word of God because the word of God is a lamp to my feet and a light along my path. In other words, it illuminates your way. It lets you see what's coming up down the road before you run into an accident, before you run into a situation, before you have some kind of great catastrophe, we have encouragement from what thus saith the Lord, and he points us to the right way, to the right exit to take. How many people have been ever driving uh, on the road? And as you drive down the highway, there are some roads that don't have street lights. Have you ever been down those, I'm talking about those country long roads. <laughs> Sometimes can even be in the city. Don't have street lights. Just as dark, just pitch black. You can't hardly see your hand in front of your face. It's so dark. Well, family, uh, that's what high beams, that's what headlights are for. And when we keep our headlights on, we may not have the street lights, but those headlights allow us to see what's up ahead. Amen. Now, it would be better if we had some street lamps. <laughs> Talk to me and hear somebody. It would be much better, much clearer. Our vision, our path would be much clearer if we could see where we are going. But if we don't have the street lights, thank God for headlights. Let's lift that up just a little bit higher. The Bible gives us headlights. Amen. And when we keep this light on, we can see our way while we travel down the roads of life. How many people know that some roads are darker than others? I'm talking about life. Some roads of life are darker than others. Some roads of life are more treacherous than others. There are more sharp turns and ins and outs. You'll be on some roads where there won't be a shoulder where you can kind of park off on the side and, and gather your bearings. Uh, but family, I want someone to know that sometimes life will present you some steep decline, some steep incline, amen? some twists and some turns, and we need the word of God that will illuminate our way. Do you agree with that? Amen. How many people agree with that? Can you say that the word of God illuminates your way? How many times has the word of God helped you uh, when you didn't know what decision to make, when you didn't know which way to go with it? How many times have you relied on the word of God and has it really helped you? I believe that we all can attest to the fact that we uh, relied on God's word and we're still here, not because of our goodness, but because of the goodness of almighty God. Amen. Amen. Let's, let's dig into the text. Now, last week we covered that a soft answer, a soft answer is an answer that turns away wrath. 
Uh, it's not a heavy word. It's not a word that condemns, but it's a word that encourages and it's a word that builds up, if you will. Uh, when you're a soft answered person, it doesn't mean that you are soft, but it means that you select your words carefully, wisely, prudently. You know how to diffuse a situation. You know how to take out insidious language and you, you don't use inflammatory language, but you bring down the temperature of the room so that everyone can be comfortable and so that uh, no one leaves being upset. You know how to bring peace into a situation where it has been hostile. Uh, talk to me and hear somebody. Uh, we ought to have wise people in our lives because there is a blessing. I, amen, somebody. There is a blessing of keeping wisdom near you. <laughs> I say there's a blessing in having wisdom nearby. And uh, it's a blessing uh, to execute wisdom. And you do that when you take the word of God and allow the word of God to lead your path. Now, uh, it's also important to know that you don't have to respond at everything people say. Amen. Anybody know right now in this room that sometimes silence is golden? Have <laughs> you ever heard of that? Sometimes silence is golden, holding your mouth, holding your peace, biting your tongue and allowing the moment to just pass. Allow it to just roll on like the waves uh, in the ocean. Just allow it to roll on. Amen. You may want to say something sometimes. Uh, you may have something to say and you and it's on the tip of your tongue. But don't say it if it's going to uh, incite a riot. Don't say it if it's going to make matters worse. Just learn to hold it and just let that moment roll on like the wave. Amen. Just roll on like waves in the ocean. Uh, my uncle, God rest his soul, uh, used to have a saying. And his saying was, uh, if you're ready to give a person a piece of your mind, uh, just be certain that it's not the piece that you need to make it on tomorrow. <laughs> if you want to give a person a piece of your mind, give them the right piece. Uh, don't don't give them anything where you might need it on tomorrow. Don't, in other words, don't give them anything that would make tomorrow or hinder tomorrow from being a better day. So be careful when you say, I want to give somebody, I'm going to give somebody a piece of my mind. And then the situation grows worse. Amen. So as children of God, we are called to be peacemakers, to diffuse uh, volatile and hostile environments. Amen. So the uh, proverbial writer gives us an example um, when he says a soft answer, a gentle answer turns away wrath. And then on last week, we examined Gideon and how Gideon judges uh, chapter eight, how Gideon uh, spoke to his brothers who had brought uh, some fury his way. They were furious, the Bible says. Uh, they were angry with him. But instead of going up uh, to their fever pitch, Gideon brought the situation down and he de-escalated the moment of intensity. And he brought some calm and some reasoning into the situation. And they saw themselves and they said, wait a minute. Uh, they saw that their fury was out of place. The Bible says that their anger was abated. How many people have been in situations where you needed somebody who could speak up and say something encouraging to just bring down the temperature in the room? How many of us have actually seen that happen? Amen. Perhaps you were the one. Uh, you were the one, hopefully, that brought it down and not the one that took it up. <laughs> but but I've been in situations where I've seen it brought down and I've been in situations where I've seen it escalate. I've seen it increase and intensify. But God would have us to be peacemakers and bring some calm, some resolve, uh, some getting along, some unity to situations uh, that are uh, hostile and aggravating even. 
Now, there's another example. I don't want to go to this negative example per se to read it, but I want to give it to you in your notes. Uh, Nabal. Nabal had a response to David, uh, but it escalated the situation and it was a harsh response. This is found in 1 Samuel 25 verses 10 through uh, 13. Uh, his response was harsh and the situation intensified and it got worse. We don't want to make matters worse. We want to diffuse the situation so that peace can prevail. Amen. Someone type that into the live chat. It's time that peace prevails. We've got enough uh, violence. We have enough disagreement. We have enough uh, uh, wickedness and corruption. We need some wholesomeness. We need some goodness. We need some peace, some tranquility as we work with one another uh, in the world. But on tonight, I want us to examine verse 4 and verse 5 of Proverbs uh, of Proverbs 15. Let's go here. Uh, verse 4 and 5. The Bible says, A wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perversiveness therein is a breach in the spirit. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life. Now, when you think in terms of the tongue, you remember that James reminds us that the tongue can be an unruly member. Amen. It must be tamed. It can be like fire. It can it can engulf and enrage uh, a situation uh, to where things get really uh, out of hand. But the Bible says that the tongue of the wise useth knowledge aright and watch it. The wholesome tongue is a tree of life. Now, wholesome identifies healthy. So the healthy tongue is a tree of life. Now, speaking in terms of being healthy, being whole, the tongue brings life. Just like the tongue can bring death, some people don't know when to be quiet, don't know when to keep their peace, hold their peace, shut their mouths. That's a very important um, characteristic and very important tool that each of us need to have in our toolboxes. We need to know that there's a time to hold your peace. Amen. That's an asset, being self-controlled, being temperate. Knowing when to hold back, knowing when to hold down, knowing when not to speak out. The wholesome tongue is a tree of life. The tongue that speaks and pours in positivity. The tongue that lifts people up. The tongue that encourages your brother. The tongue that encourages your sister. The, the tongue that uplifts someone. Amen. It doesn't keep them down, but it uplifts them. This is... Uh, the proverbial writer's idea of the wholesome tongue. Amen. It's a tongue of encouragement. It's a tongue of strength. It's a tongue of love. It's a tongue of graciousness. It's a tongue of peace. <laughs> a wholesome tongue is a tree of life. Now, trees bring life. Trees bring on oxygen. I wish I had somebody who could help me teach on tonight. A tree provides shade. So having the right words to say and knowing when to say them, when to dispatch, dispense, and employ those words, it encourages the community. It encourages your family. It encourages the individual. Hold some words. Tree of life. Things can grow when you give it the right atmosphere. Amen. Type that into the live chat. I said things around you can grow when you give it the right atmosphere. You have to give those things that need to flourish the right atmosphere. And having a tongue sets the atmosphere of the room. It establishes the tone of the room. Amen. It establishes the energy if you will, 
of the room. You ever been around people that just have negative energy, just brought negative energy to the table? It is not a delightful experience at all to be around folk who just bring a bunch of negative energy to the table. You can't hardly get anything done when you have negative energy and distractions, unnecessary distractions at the table. You need somebody who builds up and not breaks down. Watch this. Verse five. Well, let's let's continue with verse four before we jump into verse five. Perversiveness therein is a breach in the spirit. See, when people cannot control their tongue, cannot control their mouths, when they don't know what words to say, that's a breach in their spirit. There's something deeper. There's something under the surface. There's more than meets the eye. Something's going on. You may not be able to see it on the outside, but there's something internally that's holding them down, that's suppressing their spirit. They're going through some things. Amen. Going through some things. And you can be with people and you can have people right beside you, work beside you, uh, in your family, in the church, and they can be going through so many things. And you're wondering why are they pouring out and spewing out all of this vitriol, all of this venom, all of this poison. It's because they themselves are unhappy. There's something deeper than meets the eye. There's something that they're struggling with. It's something that they're going through and they don't know how to handle it. But they sure enough don't want you happy. <laughs> they don't want you to be excited. They don't, they want to quench your spirit. The Bible says quench not the spirit. But you have some professional um, <laughs> spirit quenches. Sometimes in the church, you have to be careful that you don't put a damper. Listen, just because you're down does not give you the right to bring someone else down. Amen. I may be struggling, but I have to know how to be self compartmentalized. Amen. I have to deal with it, be self contained, deal with my sorrow, deal with my sadness. I have no right spreading my sadness out to all who come within the vicinity of my presence. Uh, listen, listen, that's negative energy that does not foster or engender growth. Amen. You wonder why some things don't grow? You wonder why some plans don't get off the ground? Check the energy in the room. <laughs> Amen. Check the energy in the room and make sure that you keep it positive. Make sure that you keep it motivating. Make sure that you keep it uplifting and watch, watch things begin to grow. A fool, verse five, a fool despises his father's instructions but he that regardeth reproof is prudent. People who enjoy having people point things out to them that can enable things to be better, that's a wise person. Someone that can listen to advice and weigh it, know how to weigh it, amen, and, and see kind of what do I need to do in this situation, that's a prudent person. That's a person, listen, when you point out error to them and you do it in the right spirit, they receive it. Do it in the right manner. They receive it and they thank you for it because you're looking out for them. But also remember, you have to be just as receptive when people point things out to you. I, I can't be coming to you all of the time. I, 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 can't, <laughs> I can't come to you all of the time and tell you this is wrong and that's wrong and look at this and look at that and this is wrong and that's wrong and you should have said this and you should have said that and listen to it. I can't do that all the time. I need to encourage you some of the time and then I need to be uh, receptive of what you give me that may come off as critical or scrutinizing. I need to, it's a two-way street, family. Amen, somebody. Type in there, that encouragement is a two-way street. Correction is a two-way street. We're talking about wise words to live by. Amen. Don't, don't insert yourself as the only person who can get others right. Sometimes you may need to get right. <laughs> Talk back to me and hear somebody. 
Sometimes somebody needs to get me right. Amen. Amen. I say amen. Don't assume that I'm right all of the time. No, not all of the time. I can be wrong. And I need somebody who loves me, who cares about me to lift me up. Are you following what I'm saying? Verse number six. We want to land this plane. Verse number six. Here it is. Are you enjoying this lesson? Listen, if you're enjoying it like I'm enjoying it, amen. I hope that it's blessing your soul. Last, last text right here, and we're going to turn you loose. In the house of the righteous is much treasure, but in the revenues of the wicked is trouble. In the house of the righteous is much treasure, but in the revenues of the wicked is trouble. Now, this is not talking and referring to a physical house. He's talking about each individual spirit and soul. Are you following what I'm saying? He's talking about each individual spirit and soul. Each of us, we make up a spiritual house. Amen. Spiritual house. So each house, each house of the righteous, according to the text is right here. There's much treasure. Treasure refers to the quality of what's found on the inside. And not only the quality, but the value. There's much value in the house of the righteous. A person who is living according to God's precepts, there's much value. You want to bring those kind of people to the table. And you want to make sure that you are that kind of person yourself. Amen. I don't want to just have righteous people around me. I need to be attempting to live righteously myself. Amen. Amen. Because with righteous people, there's much treasure. And I need some righteous folk around me. But I, too, need to make sure I'm doing all that I can do so that I'm in proper standing with God. There's much treasure in that kind of spirit, in that kind of personality, within that kind of person. This is the kind of person that you love to see them come in your way. Amen. You love to see them come in your way. Listen, if folk don't love to see you come in their way, that ought to mean something. Someone says, well, I don't care what people think about me. Well, you shouldn't care what people think about you to the point where it takes you down. No, but you ought to care what your reputation is. You, you, ought, you ought to care about that. I, I need to care about what is being said about me, uh, not to the point where I'm living my life for everybody else who's talking, but I need to make sure that I'm presenting and representing myself in a Christian-like manner. And if it comes off that I'm not, I need to check myself before I wreck myself. I need to conduct a self-inventory, a self-assessment, see where I am, see if I'm offline, out of line, out of step, and then get back into the right step. Are you following what I'm saying? The house of the righteous. Watch it. But the revenues of the wicked is trouble. Just like there's a house of righteousness and a house for the righteous, there's a house for the wicked. But just like you find, or unlike, you find treasure in the house of the righteous, you find wickedness in the house or trouble in the house of the wicked. So treasure in the house of the righteous but trouble in the house of the wicked. Somebody ought to help me teach. God's word is so good. When you see people who are not living according to God's precepts, expect hard times to come their way. This is why I have to check myself because if I'm living wickedly, I ought to expect trouble to find me. It's gonna find my address. It has my telephone number. Trouble has my telephone number. Why? Because maybe I'm not living on point with God as I should. Are you following what I'm saying? 
Oh, family, listen, listen. If I'm not living on point with God, if, if I'm not doing it God's way, then that's going to show up in my life. Amen. That, that's going to show up in my life. If I'm figuring it out and I'm living worldly and I'm not living by godly principles and godly precepts, it's going to show up in my life. It's going to show up in my decision making. It's going to show up in my associations. It's going to show up in my practices and it's going to harm me and those who are nearby. Amen. So if I want to live a prudent life and a proper life, I need these wise words to live by. <laughs> family, uh, before we close, someone may say, well, what, what would keep a person from receiving instruction, preacher? What would keep a person for, uh, from receiving um, spiritual enlightenment and spiritual knowledge and what keeps a person from walking with the Lord? Write this down. First John chapter two, verses 15 through 17. First John chapter two, verses 15 through 17. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the father is not in him. And all that is within the world is the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. They are not of God, but are of the world. Amen. And when you get caught up in the world, you don't live wisely, but you live ungodly because you're caught up either in the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes, or the pride of life. So I don't need to live my life for me because I was bought with a price. Are you following what I'm saying? Don't get caught up. Don't get taken away. Some folk will stand in line in the bitter cold to get merchandise but won't come into God's house to give him glory and praise. Uh, we have to check our motives. We have to check our heart. We have to check ourselves because we may be standing guilty. Guilty is charge. Are you following what I'm saying? Wise words to live by. Don't get wrapped up in the world is what I'm saying. And I can't allow myself to get wrapped up and consumed by this world because everything that I see in this world will pass away. Heaven and earth will pass away. But God's words will never pass away. Wise words to live by. I pray that it's encouraged your soul. Listen, if you're here with us on tonight and you'd like to continue with us in Bible study or perhaps you are desirous of prayer, don't hesitate to call the number that you see at the bottom of your screen. We know that God still hears and answers prayers, and we want someone uh, to be blessed even on tonight as you continue to walk with the Lord. Now, as we land this study on today, we thank God for you studying here with us, and we pray that your soul has been encouraged. Listen, we want you to know and always remember that here at South Union, uh, we love you. And there's not a thing that you can do about it. Be blessed in the Lord. Have a wonderful, prosperous, peaceful, and productive week. And we'll see you next Wednesday night, Lord willing. God bless you. Wise words to live by. Have a good night.
be going through in your life. 